This is a very, very excellent essay on Endgame and it's very many flaws. And SK, I will admit, even found things I forgot or new things that are a problem with Endgame. However, as always, he went a little bit too far. So we're going to try to balance out the discussion. But for the record, I do think Endgame is one of the worst films of all time. But we want to be generous to both sides. Were they just pardoned? None of this was ever discussed or brought up. They just expect us to accept this as if this doesn't raise plenty of reasonable questions to be asked. There is barely any world building done to explore how the snap has changed the world we've gotten used to over all these installments over the years. What about the economy in general? How has that changed? For better or worse, half the population is gone. This would have drastic effects. Did crime increase? Did this make friendly neighborhoods not so friendly? I get that it's a three hour movie, but these things are still worth covering, and I'm sure they'd be able to if they didn't spend so much time on that awful time heist. Well, that's what's interesting is SK focuses on the weak point and the strong point gets less attention. I agree, the world building with people disappearing was very, very weak, very, very lame, but his point of attack is the time jump and certain amount of character development that did and did not happen. I think that's fine to concentrate there, but we don't ever really know did Thanos do something bad? That's not really clearly established. We can imagine cases like, say, a five-year-old who's in a really bad family. If their family disappeared, that's not a bad thing. And even with the time jump, let's say that really bad family that's been very abusive comes back. This is a ten-year-old. They're still going to face a lot of years of hardship. So it's one of the puzzles of Endgame that it's addressed only in one line of dialogue where Captain America says, well, the whales are coming back. But even if Captain America did not say that, you'd be like, a lot of things have changed. Did they alter for the good or the bad? I presume, I guess Thanos did something bad, but they don't really explore it. They're just like, okay, we need to reverse it. But they never establish why. And SK could focus on that, but instead he's focusing, I think, on more juicy topics, but I don't think they're as important. But now we get to the Hulk, and I think we have total agreement. But then again, he goes too far with getting into Hawkeye vaguely describe it, and expect us to accept that this is the resolution to his arc. We saw a beginning, we didn't see the middle, but then we see the end, or after the end, or whatever you want to call it. That's incredibly disappointing. We didn't even get a proper answer as to why Hulk kept hiding out in Infinity War, despite the survival of Bruce, the Hulk, and his close friends depending on his help. I feel this problem of off-screen development is also applicable to Clint. He has become bloodthirsty and vengeful after he lost his family. Rhodey even describes his action in horror. This is the problem with the essay. It is really, really good, but he does miss a lot of things. Did they explain why the Hulk has his issues? Yes, it's bad, but in Infinity War, we do see Thanos beat up the Hulk. Did that make any sense? No, it didn't make any sense at all. Like, the Hulk literally just punched Thanos directly in the face, and Thanos shrugged it off like nothing. So it did an insane amount of damage to the Hulk, his power levels, his character. But again, we did see him get a beat down. Apparently that was enough to really hurt Bruce mentally. Did it make any sense? No, it made no sense. And definitely them just saying, oh, it took the best of me, it took the worst of me, and uh, yeah, yeah, I found the cure. Yeah, it sounds really stupid. But then we get to Hawkeye. Do I really need all these details to tell me that Hawkeye losing his family turns him into super dark Batman? No, no, I don't need tons of details to know that if you lose your family and you like your family, which that is established with Hawkeye, they did establish that, yeah, you could become super dark Batman. And I have the same problem I picked up earlier. Why is this a bad thing? So apparently he's bad because he's murdering bad people. And we'll bracket Secret Invasion because what War Machine told Black Widow makes no sense. And now with Secret Invasion, maybe it does make sense, but in a really stupid way. Again, this is a really bad film. I would be forced to say, though, with Hawkeye, it's plausible the character development was weak, but it's passable because Hawkeye, the series, did fill in a few details. And again, it is plausible that you could become Super Dark Batman. I don't need a ton of details in this case. However, I do agree that overall, this was pretty shockingly stupid and bad as a film overall. And it was really lazy in way too many places. So you can call Endgame many things, but it's not a great story. Still, I think SK would have been better off being way more balanced and being more honest about its good points, however few they are, in his discussion.